Hello everyone. Let's try to be a cheat code ninja today. We'll be looking at a very interesting question. Here you are given an input string s and you have to find two disjoint palindromic subsequences inside it such that the product of their lengths is maximum. These subsequences have to be disjoint and hence they cannot be sharing the same character at the same index. And since we are looking at subsequences, the characters in the subsequence do not have to be continuous. For example, you could look at the subsequence ETE and see that the characters are not continuous. Similarly, for the subsequence CDC. In this example, the length of the subsequence ETE is 3 and CDC is 3. Hence, the product of their lengths is 9. Let's look at another pair, ETE and COC. In this case, the product of their lengths is 9. Let's look at a final pair, ETE and ODO. Even in this case, the product of their lengths is 9. We cannot find any other two disjoint palindromic subsequences such that the product of their lengths is greater than 9. Hence, 9 is the answer. It is also given in the constraints of the question that the length of the word cannot be greater than 12. Hence, this is a clue that we can even brute force our solution. So now let's dive deeper into the problem and see how we can come up with an intuitive solution for this. So now let's use the same word from a previous example. Let's try to understand how do we create subsequences from a given word. In any subsequence, for each character, we have two choices. Whether to include that character or not. For example, we have two choices for the zeroth character, whether to include it or not. Similarly, we have two choices for character 1 and again two choices for character 2 and so on for all the remaining characters. Hence, the total number of subsequences that can be formed is 2 raised to the power n because we have two choices for each and every character and the number of characters is n. And each different subsequence can be represented by the binary representation of n bit, where 0 might represent that character being ignored and 1 might represent that character being included in the subsequence. Let's take a look at an example. Let's try to create the subsequence from this bit mask. We have 11 bits for the 11 characters in our word. Let's take a look at them one by one. Since the bit is 0, we will ignore the character corresponding to it. Hence, we will ignore L. Similarly, we will ignore the first character. We will ignore the second character. Since the bit is 1, we will include the third character in our subsequence. We will ignore the fourth character. We will ignore the fifth character. Since this bit is set, we will include the sixth character in our subsequence. We will ignore the next two characters as the bits are 0. As the bit is set to 1, we will include the ninth character O. We will ignore the last character as the bit is set to 0. We have generated our subsequence from the bit mask, but we can see that this subsequence is not a palindromic subsequence. Let's look at another example where the subsequence generated is a palindromic subsequence. We will ignore the 0th character because the bit is 0. Since the bit is 1, we will include the first character in our subsequence. Similarly, we will ignore the next two characters as the bits are 0. We will include the fourth character C in our subsequence as the bit is set to 1. Again, we will ignore the next two characters as the bits are set to 0. We will include the seventh character in our subsequence as the bit is set to 1. As the remaining bits are 0, we will ignore the remaining characters. 
Hence our subsequence is E C E and we can see that it is indeed a palindromic subsequence. Please note that two different bit masks can also result in the same subsequence string. For example, here both of them result in the same subsequence string ECE. But we will have to consider them as two different subsequences as they have used characters at different indices. Hence, a bit mask will be a unique identifier for a subsequence. But the subsequence string cannot be a unique identifier. Let's again look at the two subsequences given in our original example. The bit mask representation of the two subsequences would be and given these two palindromic subsequences, we could find out if they are disjoint or not using the AND operator. Here we could see that the AND operator would result in 0 because there are no overlapping characters in the two subsequences. Hence we could store all the palindromic subsequences and then for each one of them, we have to check with the others if they are disjoint or not. If they are disjoint, we could find the product of their lengths and keep track of the maximum product found so far. To store all the palindromic subsequences, we could use a hash map, where the key would be the bit mask and the value will be the length of the subsequence. We could also use a hash set instead of a hash map, but by using a hash map, we are storing the length of the subsequence, hence our solution will be a little easier to implement. The time complexity would be For each of the bit mask, we have to generate the subsequence and then check if it is palindromic or not. This would be 2 raised to the power n into n. The maximum number of palindromic subsequences for a string can be 2 raised to the power n. You could take the example of a string where all the characters are the same. And for each of the 2 raised to power n subsequences, we have to compare within themselves whether they are disjoint or not. This would be 2 raised to power n into 2 raised to power n. Hence, our time complexity would be O of 2 raised to power n into 2 raised to power n. Because we will be taking the bigger of these two. The space complexity would be 2 raised to power n because we will be storing 2 raised to power n subsequences. Now let's implement our solution. Let's keep a variable n for the length of the string. We are going to keep a hash map to store the bit mask and their lengths. Let's initialize our result to be 0 because in any case even if we don't have any valid palindromic subsequence our answer will still be 0. Let's generate all our bit mask from 1 till 2 raised to power n minus 1. We don't need to create a bit mask for 0 because in that case the subsequence would be empty and the result would be 0 which is already initialized. Let's create our subsequence from a bit mask using a helper function. Now let's define our helper function where we receive our mask and then we return the corresponding subsequence. Let's keep a variable to store our subsequence. And now for each bit in the mask, let's check if it is 1 or not. If it is 1, then we will include it in our subsequence. To check if the ith bit from the right is set to 1 or not, we will left shift 1 by i bits and then end it with mask. If that bit is set, then we will include the ith character from the last. Hence, the index would be n minus i minus 1. We could also have written this index as just i. It does not matter that for a given mask, we start including characters from the left side or the right side. Because for any given bit mask, we will also be covering its corresponding palindromic bit mask. For example, these two palindromic bit masks will be covered and it does not matter if we take characters from the left or the right side. This part could also be checked by right shifting mask by i bits and then ending it with 1. And now we could return our subsequence. If now this subsequence is a palindrome, we'll store it in our hash map as a key and its length as its value. 
Its length can be calculated by counting the number of bits that are set to 1. And now let's write our helper function to check if a string is palindrome or not. For each bit mask in the hash map, we'll have to check with other bit masks in the hash map if they are disjoint or not. So now let's write two for loops on our hash map to generate all the pairs. So now let's check if the two masks are disjoint or not using the AND operator. If the AND operator results in zero, that means they are disjoint and we could update our result. And finally, we could return our result variable. Now let's submit our solution. As you can see, our solution is accepted. If you have any doubts or concerns regarding this solution, please mention in the comments. If this video was helpful to you, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.